On this episode of Locked On Lightning, the Bolts are back in action tonight from the All-Star break. We talk about the trade deadline, who is on the radar for the Tampa Bay Lightning, all that and more. But first, let's play that music. You're Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So today we're talking trade targets. Trade deadline is a little under a month away. And a little bit of a different feel, I believe to this year's trade trade deadline because last couple of seasons, last couple of deadlines, it's it's always been not a matter of who, you know who's we're going to get who who Julian Breeze boss is going to bring in at the deadline last minute. It, it it's it's more so the quality of player, I think. And the last couple of trade deadlines have been, you know, almost a sure thing in terms of what level what quality we are going to be getting back last couple of deadlines as you know just to recount to recall Barkley Goodrow Blake Coleman Nick Paul Dennis Savard David Savard excuse me and really all those names that I just listed uh, and even Brandon Hagel, who, as we all know, didn't really exactly make a big, uh, didn't make a big splash with the Lightning when he was brought in, but we see what he's doing this year. All, all those names, even Brandon Hagel, we'll throw him into that conversation because he was brought at the deadline. All those names were players that were that played a significant part for this lightning team during the regular season, as well as during uh, the NHL playoffs, which obviously uh, is really, if you're a buyer is really the reason why you make a trade at the deadline and the lightning are definitely a buyer, but the issue this year and the reason why it feels different is a salary cap. Uh, and, And, the Lightning aren't just feeling, they're not the only team that is just feeling the the grip, the the stranglehold, have you, uh, of the salary cap. It, it, it's also the rest of the league. And normally every year we see this mad rush of, of trades and, and um you know, we already saw a high profile trade of, of one of the top players on that. That was available. Uh, Bo Harvat to the new New York Islanders uh, off the board. And, and the Islanders, they're more of a team that is just fighting to stay in playoff contention. Um, obviously, Tampa Bay, the, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Boston Bruins, the the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a whole different class, whole different situation, uh, in especially higher on the totem pole in terms of NHL hierarchy. And which is why I, I feel like with, with the cap constrictions, constrictions and uh, kind of some of the question marks that we see with Tampa Bay, it, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be one of the most, I believe, creative uh, salary caps that, uh, excuse me, trade deadlines that we have seen in quite some time. Uh, given, you know, trying to see who we could, uh, who Julian Brees Boss will bring in. But I am confident, and I've said it, I, I said it on an episode or two before the All Star break that there's two names that come to mind. If I'm the GM of the Tampa Bay Lightning, the two names that come in mind are Luke Shen, who 
has been long rumored to be on the target list for Julian Brees boss. I think that even if that is the only move that the lightning make at the deadline, I will be perfectly fine with that because as it seems as though is always somewhat the case the last couple of years. And it's not something that really is a bad thing to look out for. The lightning are always on the lookout for that, that extra player who could come in, play physical, uh, be able to, to contribute some way on the defensive end, uh, as well as maybe here and there add a little pressure uh, on the offensive side of things. Obviously, Luke Shen not known uh, for his his offensive play. Uh, is, though, not shy uh, when being able to play physical uh, at this moment in time leads the NHL in hits. So definitely something that the Lightning want to have. In years past, uh, he was, if you remember, if you're if you're just new, uh, to being a Lightning fan, Luke Shen was part of those two Stanley Cup teams. And the thing about Luke Shen that made him so valuable to this Lightning team was the fact that he was able to sort of play both ways. And what I mean by that is that he'll be listed as a forward, but really John Cooper, to a certain extent, I mean, would utilize him as almost the third defenseman or or even you know if we have a guy out uh a second uh, uh put him on a line one of those the third line pairings and i don't think it's going to come down to a point where we're going to be seeing luke shen suit up at in the defensive spot on the blue line for the tampa bay lightning but at the same time you know you always got to stay stay prepared and nonetheless i still think that bringing luke shen on would be the best move for Tampa Bay, given that I think we could all agree that a a long Stanley Cup playoff run is very much expected from this team, and you're going to need extra bodies that could go out there uh, and play physical night after night after night, and that's what Luke Shen brings. Um, now, sliding him in, I honestly think the logical step would be to – have him alternate with Vlad Nemestikov. You know, that has been the big issue this year. Basically, Vlad Nemestikov has been basically non-existent. And, you know, very disappointing signing, really. You know, he's had his moments, like I stated on past episodes, where he has been able to go out there, create chances for himself, but just cannot really finish on the offensive side of things and that you know there are a few players on this team that I could say with confidence that it is their job to go out there and score goals and you kind of have to ask yourself with Nemestikov what was his job you know a little bit of a question mark out there you know I, I get the reasoning for bringing him in you need another forward. You have that familiarity. He he originated with with the the Tampa Bay in his early days with Tampa Bay, and really he's come in and like I said, he's created his options, his, his opportunities here and there. But at the end of the day, when you're not scoring, when you're not producing points, whether it be assisting or scoring, and you're a little bit undersized compared to everybody on the on the ice and you know you, you're really not going to go out there and lay the body night after night you know decisions have to be made and unfortunately i think that if you're looking at two players that have somewhat underperformed this year uh vlad domestikov and ross colton being the other I think Nemestikov uh, is going to be the odd man out. And I think bringing in Luke Shen um, would be the best viable re uh, replacement on that fourth line. Because let's face it, Nemestikov is slowly turning into a, a I guess you could say, a rotational player. 
uh, as is what we saw with Luke Shen when he was with the Lightning. Didn't play every night. Uh, Cooper played him in certain situations, uh, especially against opponents where he's going to be very physical out there. Uh, and especially when players need it to, you know, the night off to recuperate. And and we might see if Shen is brought in, we might see Eric Chernak moved up to the first line alongside Zach Bogosian and Shen be brought on to that third line with either Sergachev or Cole. So something to think about there because there is it like i said there that's the one thing that luke shen you know he's not going to score goals he might get some points here and there by mistake because let's face it he's not crashing the net anytime soon his main function with this team is going to be playing defense and i think that's why given all the somewhat issues tampa bay has had this year on the defensive side of things most notably with victor hedman not being victor hedman uh, Luke Shen, I think, is definitely going to be uh, a huge part of the puzzle. And definitely, I wouldn't be surprised if he's the day, if if the Lightning were to make the move. Like I said, I think that really at the end of the day, you if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning, why aren't you making this deal? That's the way I look at it. You know, if you're, if you're not trading for Luke Shen, a guy who could easily slide into the rotation, um, what is the better option out there that is not going to cause you to do a lot? And, and speaking of costing a lot, we'll talk about more of that. Uh, the price tags, you know, what what kind of, because obviously in a trade, you got to give something up. The Lightning don't have a first round pick for the next two years. So we're going to talk about that. What do the Lightning give up? You know, no team is just going to give up a player for free just for the sake of getting rid of the salary. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the next segment when we bring up the other player I really like. Uh, the lightning to go after in just a bit. But first, I want to talk about one of today's sponsors, and that is Athletic Greens. Now, we've been talking about, we just got done talking about trade. And and I think that taking Athletic Greens is one of the best trades you'll ever make in terms of nutritional improvement, uh, especially uh, you're not spending a lot of money and you're improving your gut health and you're taking all your vitamins in where if you know most people take a thousand different vitamins and they got to buy this bottle and that bottle and this bottle. Well, when I take my athletic greens, I only have to take one scoop of powder with a glass of water every morning and I get all the vitamins I need. And like I said, it costs you next to nothing. It costs less than $3 a day. And like I said, it's the best trade off you can get because you're investing in your health and it's definitely cheaper than your cold brew habit. So right now it's it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a water, scoop, one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and to pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. We're available wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form, as well as we are on YouTube and follow us at our social media pages, LO underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. So we're talking about trades because, you know, yes, the lightning are, Back in action tonight against the Florida Panthers, uh, game one of two of a back-to-back. And the biggest storyline, obviously, from now until March 3rd is going to be the tread deadline. And like I said, and I will, f- I firmly believe this, this is going to be one of the more important trade deadlines that we have seen in the last three years because there's so many question marks around it. There's, there's so many teams that I feel, in my opinion, that not only because of money constrictions and, and, and the salary cap, I believe, is only going to be going up $1 million next year. But at the same time, you know, a lot of teams, I think, and, and this might be a little bit, I don't know, you could say it's petty, but I think also, you know, teams are also looking out for themselves and. I, I don't think teams are going to be as maybe as cavalier with 
giving a, a high quality player for, for next to nothing to the Tampa Bay Lightning, a team where, where maybe some GMs and I definitely bet you money that some fan bases probably would say that, oh, they don't need extra help. We all know what's going to happen. They're going to go into the Eastern Conference Finals. No problem. They'll they'll claw and fight their way to get there. But at the same time, you know, they don't need help. They have the team. But as we all know, there's there's no such thing as is really there's no such thing as is you know improving too much. And and I think the lightning uh really have some improvement to make. Uh like I stated in the first segment of the show, uh on the back end, uh I, I think that they really need some help. Like I said, Victor Hedman has been banged up a majority of the season. I I think that it would be irresponsible to go into the playoffs without some sort of extra body on the on on the ice or on the bench actually to to help you out in the off in the off chance that either you know headman's injury which curious to see at the end of the year when it's all said and done because we will hear as to what exactly happened with him but lightning of course is as every team does keeping it under wraps um I'm also curious to see what Cooper does going down the line as we get closer, you know, through, because I, I firmly believe that the lightning as always will kind of wait to the last couple of days of, of February and the first couple of days of March to really make a move. I'm sure there's been phone calls here and there made to other teams about, you know, this player and that player and, and, and what is it going to cost you and, and what, how much of a return can the lightning get back? And as for cost, I, I, here's my thing. And I was talking about this with the locked on NHL Monday host, Gil Martin, the, uh, today on, on, on my uh, guest appearance, I'm trying to think of what would be something as an opposing GM. You look at the lightning assets now, just kind of running it down the middle and and kind of laying it out there. The lightning only have about 700 K left in salary space remaining for the rest of the season. They don't have a first rounder. They don't have a second rounder for this upcoming draft. Uh, They have rounds three through seven plus two uh, in the seventh round. Uh, one of those being from Anaheim. I don't think anyone's going to be giving you a uh, a bottom six player because that's what we really need. It doesn't really matter, um, you know, really what kind of player, what 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 kind of what we're getting back. I mean, the Lightning need a depth player, a depth forward, ideally, uh, or 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 a guy who could kind of do both, as is what is in Luke Shen's situation, or a a depth defenseman. So at the end of the day, what is, you know, if you're looking forward to 24 and 25, the Lightning, once again, don't have a first round pick because of prior draft pick, uh, prior trades. Uh, They have the Chicago fourth rounder for 2024. And then they don't have all their draft picks until 25. So is a team really going to give you a depth player for a first round draft pick in 25? I don't think so. But at the same time, is Julian Brees boss willing to part ways with a first round draft pick since the lightning won't have one in the next two years. Now on the other side of that, does, does, does Julian Brees boss make the trade that we've been talking about over the last couple of years? And that is trading Alex Kalorn for potentially a future first rounder, which I don't firmly believe he is worth that. You know, he's having a great year. He's had, uh, career years pretty much over the last couple of ye- seasons and and you know including myself you know as frustrating as it was to to see him ultimately pretty much disappear uh in the playoffs last year I think that was a fluke I mean we see what he's doing this year and I think we could all agree that we know what Alex Klorin is capable of but is is a team willing to give the Tampa Bay Lightning some sort of substantial draft compensation for Alex Kalorn? When a he's thirty four, he's he has his moments where you could see that the wear and tear that his body has taken his has taken over the years is slowly but surely catching up to him. But 
that's the question we got to ask ourselves. And, and in my opinion, I don't think that Alex Corn gets traded because I think at the end of the day, I would rather have that surplus. I'd rather have somebody be picked up at the deadline and have to be rotating, such as a Luke Shen, um, rather than trading away Alex Klorn and then not having a deal come uh, to fruition where we don't have uh, that extra money or or we don't have that player that we were looking for to clear space. I, I just don't think Tampa Bay takes that risk. And I think for this player that I'm going to refer to next, I, I don't think that I think this is more out of my two target players. I think this is the less likely one just because, yes, he is a very good player. But he is a player I firmly believe that needs to play every day. This isn't a case where Luke Shen can sit, you know, three out of the next five games and and be consistent. This player uh, and the player I'm referring to, if you may have heard from maybe past episodes or today's episode of Locked on NHL, is Ivan Barbashev from the St. Louis Blues. I think he's a very, very skilled player. Uh, when I say skilled, that I, I firmly believe he could do a lot of positive things. Um, uh, you know, you saw it last year that the offense is there for him. Uh, he scored 60 points in 81 games last year. And that, that shows you that, you know, he's, he's, he's able to go out there and play physical. This year he has nine goals and 24 points. His plus minus is a little rough, but at the same time, I mean, St. Louis isn't exactly a good team. He isn't doesn't exactly have a good goaltender behind him. And he's still pretty much in the prime of his career. He's 26. Uh he's 27, excuse me. I I, I think that we could see him eventually mold into the kind of player that Alex Korn is. Um he is six feet, 187 pounds, so a little lighter, a little maybe a little less meat on him, but um you know, he's a player that I believe that not only could go out there and score, but could definitely go out there and play physical. And that's what the Lightning need. And and he kind of reminds me in some ways like Nick Paul, just body type, uh, just ability to score. Now, Nick Paul is a little bit more gifted in that regard. Barbashev is still kind of building up to it. I don't think that we're going to maybe next year we'll see uh, him if, if he does come to the Lightning. I would love to see Barbashev, uh, you know, score a little bit more, have a little bit of another Nick Paul kind of player on this team. And the best part about this is that you get a solid offensive option down the middle. And I think that's really at the end of the day, the lightning need and really what they want. I would really like to see, you know, if, if Barbashev were to come in, I wouldn't mind Ross Colton. And this might be a little controversial, I mean, either or. I wouldn't mind either Maroon going back down to the fourth line or Ross Colton going down to the fourth line. Then again, if you have Barbashev on that third line with him and Paul, you don't need Maroon. And you could just throw him back down to the fourth line and Mestikov sits out and maybe move Paul over to the wing. Or you could just have him take face-offs uh, and, and then have Paul move over to the wing. I mean, it's really dealer's choice at that point. Uh, but I think these two players, I think Barbashev and 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 Shen are the best options. They're the best affordable options, in my opinion. I, I, I think that you can't go wrong with either or. Maybe I'm being a little selfish here, but I would like to see both these players go, uh, be in a lightning uniform in the coming weeks. At the same time, like I said, you know, what is really what what kind of trade package are we gonna see for these two guys? Or if 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 either or either of these guys at the end of the day. And and that's really where Julian Brees boss is, you know, he's, he's earned, he's earned every single penny that he makes uh, as general manager of this team. But I think at the end of the day, I, I think that he, we are really going to have to see him dig deep and, and figure something out. I mean, if the lightning do lose their 20, their 2025 first round. That's fine. If if it does result in in Barbashev and Shen. Um, of course, you know, you would you're probably losing a player. 
uh, in this scenario, and it's probably going to be Kalorn, which, like I said, does Julian Brees-Bois risk losing Alex Kalorn the way he has played this year? A uh, little bit of a resurgence, kind of a little bit of a I still got it statement play from him given how he played in the playoffs. So uh, we'll see. Let me know below in the comments on our YouTube page what you think. What is the best trade package? Do you like Barbershev? Do you like Shen? Is there another player out there that the Lightning should go after? Let us know, and we'll talk about it on the next episode. So uh, right before we get into the Florida Panthers game real quick, I want to talk to you about uh, another one of our sponsors, and that is FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports easy. I love FanDuel Sportsbook because the app is safe, secure, super easy to use. I don't, you know, if I want to put in a live bet option, you know, the especially with the Super Bowl right around the corner, you know, if I want to put in a last bet or an in-game bet, I can just bing, bing, bang, boom, right there, put in my bet, and I'm ready to roll for the next half or the next quarter or even the next play. Uh, and like I said, easy to use. I don't have to, you know, go searching for odds. They pop up right there for me. Uh, so join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on the Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make Every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. So wrapping things up here on the show, once again, if you haven't already, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever. Podcasts are distributed in audio form. We are also on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, drop, hit that notification bell as well. So as soon as the newest episode drops, you are notified of the newest episode. So the lightning kick things back off finally <laughs> you know i this might be a popular unpopular opinion but i absolutely you know i i i truly believe in, in players getting recognition all-star nods this that and the other thing but i truly despise the all-star all-star game any all-star game really maybe baseball is probably the only and basketball are the only sports where it's entertaining to me nfl nhl i i just it doesn't it's it's nothing that i like i mean i obviously you know i'm a little older and i've seen my fair share of, of all-star games pro bowls whatever you want to call it especially with all the skills contest stuff i don't know that the fastest slap shot thing is cool uh the breakaway challenge is interesting but it's really not something and, and really not something that interests me. I just, you know, I would rather, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm just being old man on the porch, even though I'm only 30, but that was probably one of the longest weeks we've had in, in quite some time. And, and, you know, the lightning go into that, that break eight and two in their last 10 with a three game win streak. And, you know, you always love, I always say that the lightning are the kind of team when, they have a long layoff you kind of see them start from scratch it's not kind of like a let's pick off where we left off kind of scenario now maybe maybe we might see a little bit of a difference here with this lightning team you know they have been rolling like i said uh one of the the higher scoring teams in the nhl they rank fourth in scoring uh with about a little over three and a half goals scored per game uh, where they are kind of in the midfield, I guess, if you want to say, allowing some of the least, only a little under three goals per game. Um, in this scenario, what I think it does is, you know, the Lightning will get off to a slow start, as they are prone to do. I mean, at this point, I I wouldn't be surprised if if we go into the first intermission down one nothing, possibly 2 nothing. But I I, I think that the one th positive we could take from a a long break such as this even when the lightning are playing well and playing very well is that it helps a guy like, like andre vasileski kind of just figure it out clear his head and i'm fine with that I, I i think that that's the best thing for him i like i said he's had a little bit of a sort of a 
I guess a off year, and and that's kind of a silly thing to say considering if you look at his numbers this year compared to the year he won the Vezina Trophy, pretty much almost identical, which is scary to think about. And he's not even in the conversation for the Vezina this year, and that's just more of a testament, I think, to how well Linus Allmark is playing this year. And and so you know we might see a little bit of a second half resurgence hopefully um from Vasilevsky I would very much like to see him rattle off a couple of shutouts here in the second half of the NHL season going into the playoffs uh I I I really think that you know tonight as I think every night is uh as long as he's in net is a good opportunity and, and there's definitely a good chance that he could rattle off a shutout uh as we all know the Panthers aren't exactly uh the team that they were last year, 24, 22 and six as of right now, out of the playoff race, or at least out of the wild card spot. I don't expect them to really do much in the second half. You know, they will show some fight here and there, but I just think that at this point in time, I think um, really you could kind of, you know, barring some catastrophic meltdown from Washington and Pittsburgh. uh, I, I think that we could kind of close the book a little bit on at least, the uh, the Panthers' chances to make the playoffs. Now, in terms of tonight's game, I think at the end of the day, and I might sound a little cocky, I think right now, as is pretty much every year, the the Lightning are going to go out there and 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 show why they're they're the big brother in the state of Florida, why why they are still the top dog in this Sunrise State rivalry. Uh, I expect them to go out there. I would expect to see Vazzy versus Brabovsky. And I expect the Lightning to go out there and, like I said, falter early on, which they, they are prone to do. And I think the second the second period, I think we're going to see probably three goals uh, from this Lightning team. And then that is really when we'll, we'll look uh, at the game and, and kind of say, you know, even though there, it's only a two-goal deficit, uh, I, 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 we could probably say that this game might be over just because I think once the lightning get a little bit of, uh, momentum going into that second period, I think really that'll be all she wrote at that point. Uh, especially if you have a guy like Burbovsky in that and as well, especially going up against guys such as Braden point, Nikita Kucherov, who both have had phenomenal runs over the last couple of months. So, uh, I'm predicting a five, three win, maybe five, two. I, I think the Lightning are very much capable of dropping a five spot on Florida. So we'll be back tomorrow to definitely recap uh, the win or the game at least. Uh, I But, uh, yeah, like I fully expect the Lightning to come out swinging tonight. And, and yeah, they'll falter early. But at the end of the day, I, I think they'll, they'll get it together as they always do. And we'll start off uh, the second half of the NHL season uh, with, with the Banks. So, That's been it for this episode of Locked on Lightning, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you.